Okay, today we're jumping ahead a little bit, looking at 2 Nephi 12, 16. And upon all the ships of the sea, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all pleasant pictures. Did Joe Smith just copy portions of the King James Version into the Book of Mormon? This is something that I've been getting in the comments two or three times now, and I wanted to address it and explain why this is not the case. So people in the comments have been saying things like, a large portion of the Book of Mormon is just copied from the Bible, so it's not that impressive of what he was able to do. And I can see how you would think that, uh, granted it's not. I wouldn't call it a significant or the majority of the Book of Mormon is copied from the Bible, but there are large portions of Isaiah that show up in the Book of Mormon. According to the story, it, it tracks based on the timing of where they lived and the time they lived. Isaiah would have been a really important part of their life, and they would have talked a lot about Isaiah. Um, but did they simply copy, did Joseph Smith simply copy the King James Version over? into the Book of Mormon, or did Nephi copy his scripture into the Book of Mormon? Uh, who was it that copied? Was it Nephi or was it Joseph Smith? And that's the question that we need to answer. So looking at this verse specifically, the Book of Mormon says, and upon all the ships of the sea, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all the pleasant pictures. Isaiah 2.16 says, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all the pleasant pictures. So we have a discrepancy here where Joseph Smith or Nephi, depending on who we decide actually copied this, added a line, and upon all the ships of the sea, in the, to the Book of Mormon. Did Joseph Smith write that trying to throw people off or trying to add in dialogue where he wanted uh, to Isaiah, or did Nephi copy this um, from the brass plates, and this is actually what it said at the time. So that's what... That's the question that we need to figure out. Interestingly enough, if we look at the Septuagint, which is the Greek, the oldest Greek text, which is even older, an even older translation than the documents used in the King James translation, that says, and upon every ship of the sea, and upon every display of fine ships in Isaiah 2.16. Where the King James Version says, and upon all the ships of Tarshish, and upon all the pleasant pictures. The Book of Mormon has the text from the Septuagint and the text from the King James Version combined into one. What does that tell us? It tells us that either Joseph Smith was copying both from the Septuagint and the King James Version, or Nephi was copying from a text that predated the Septuagint and the King James Version. So what do we know about the King James Version? It was translated from Hebrew Masoretic text, the oldest versions date to the end of the first millennium AD. So we have the first, the King James versions in written in English were copied from Hebrew Masoretic text um, around 1611. The Masoretic text is still only dates to the first millennium AD after Christ. And then it made its way to America with the original settlers, with the pilgrims. Pilgrims had the King James Version. The King James Version was well circulated in Joseph Smith's day and time. And then we have the Septuagint. What do we know about that? It's a Greek text. The oldest versions date to the 2nd and 3rd century BC. So this, the Septuagint translation, the Greek translation of the Septuagint, predates the Masoretic text that were used in the King James Version. Um, so there's an argument to be made that the Septuagint is likely more accurate than the King James Version. The Isaiah translation would have been done in the second century BC. The Gotten Gen series, which collates the many different Greek manuscripts of the Septuagint in order to ascertain the best possible reading of each verse of the Bible, is the most commonly used. Um, a person that translated the Septuagint was Charles Thompson. He was a secretary to Congress in the United States, and this was done in the very early 1800s. So keep in mind with the Septuagint that there was only a thousand copies printed of the Septuagint in 18, 
1808, I believe. In 1808, a thousand copies were were produced in Philadelphia, and let's say that all thousand of those were only circulated within the United States. At the time, there was 10 million people in the United States. That gives Joseph Smith a 0.1% chance of having a copy of the Septuagint at that time. Um, there's no documents, no eyewitnesses, no library records, uh, anything stating that Joseph Smith had a copy of the Septuagint during the translation, um, much less had it with him during the translation. There's nothing showing even that he was, had a King James Version with him during the translation, no witnesses of that. In order for Joseph Smith to create this text, he would have had to be smart enough to compare the two, combine the two in his head, memorize it, show up and pretend to translate the entire second chapter of Isaiah, combining the Septuagint and the King James Version, which he likely did not have a Septuagint. The most plausible conclusion that the brass plates that Nephi was copying the text from contained an older source text than that used in the Masoretic or the Septuagint. So the likely scenario is that the brass plates, which dated to before 600 BC, were older than the Greek texts of the Septuagint, older than the post-AD texts in the Masoretic texts, and at one point contained both the text from the Septuagint and the Masoretic text, with the Septuagint dropping one line and the Masoretic text dropping one line, resulting in completely different verses in the Septuagint and the Masoretic text, or in the Septuagint and the King James Version, where the Book of Mormon contains the oldest translation and has the full text.